All right, first, uh, this lock nut comes off with a 13 millimeter socket. Uh, the other thing you'll also need, and I have the old gear wrench set out here. I love this set, particularly when I'm doing this because it's two different sizes. Uh, one of each end for this job, but this is a 5 30 seconds Allen wrench. Uh, and you have to uh, remove this set screw. It keeps the wheel from coming off the bearing. Don't forget to reinstall that screw before you put the outer back on. I always like to check these bearings and test them before. Um, putting them back on, make sure they're free spinning. All right, so I'm gonna grab a hammer. Also part of the toolkit you'll need. Be right back. All right, got a hammer. Switch to the uh, GoPro for the uh, ones that noticed. I uh, want to get better up close footage and needed some hands free help. All right, the setup here with the GoPro on the tabletop is not going to work well with hammering, so give a little rundown of what I'm going to do, and then I'm just going to do it off camera. But basically, I usually have to knock the old wheel off um, this one side. It usually brings this outer bearing with it, and oftentimes the inner bearing stays, which is why it puts up a little bit of a fight. Um, there's plenty of times that I can knock one loose with just a hammer. Sometimes I'll just use 3 8 extension and get right down here on this level and I can get away from this area here and I can hammer on this so I'm gonna get this one knocked off here and uh, be right back okay got this one off as suspected it put up a little bit of a battle this inner bearing is actually bad on this one uh, it's, it's a little sticky now there are times that and it's starting to loosen up as I roll it. And, uh, there are times that I've sprayed just some silicone lube in here and got these to really free up. Uh, you know, the environment that these things spend their life uh, wet for so long and just not in a great place to get much ventilation <laughs> over a tub of water. But uh, I'm going to spray some lube on this one, see if it'll free up and make a decision whether or not to keep it. But you can see that it's pinned in by the actual bolt. This is a molded part of the bolt here. And the only way that you can get this bearing off is to go ahead and take the other side lock nut off. And then this whole stud can be tapped through and it will release that bearing. Um, it's a job, I'll be honest with you, and you need an extra nut. Sometimes you have to borrow one from another wheel. Uh, because the only way you can get this bolt to stay in position once you break it free is you need to use a jam nut because um, these things just don't really want to cooperate all that much it'll it'll turn on you uh, and, and want to start spinning at times so in any case what I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and see if I can lube this thing up and uh, I guess you'll see how it feels and make a decision whether we're gonna place it or not um, I'm not gonna show obviously all of these there's no point they're all the same um, just doing one will give you the rundown of not just what needs done, but you know how to do it. It's it's not intimidating. It's a little expensive, but I think one of these trolleys you can buy a complete assembly is like four hundred something dollars. So I think usually I get away with about a sixty to eighty dollar rebuild on this, and it's like new again for a year or two, and we use them every day. So I'm gonna get some lube uh, sprayed on this, some silicone spray, and uh, be ready. All right, this thing freed up good enough for me. 
Um, it has the, the slightest bit of drag, like a brand new bearing might. Um, you know, I could tell that there's no excess free play in it. It's a little snug, and I don't mind that uh, at all. It does have a little bit of corrosion on the outer portion of this that I'm going to go ahead and get off with a scotch right here because it'll help it seat into the new wheel a lot better because you do have to knock the wheel on here. Uh, obviously, have to do that off camera as well. Just can't get... To hitting on this thing without the camera jumping all over the place so anyway just kind of getting this corrosion off here and clean it up and kind of wipe it up and hit it with the silicone spray one more time I do like to clean these up and make sure that they're lubricated and moving well because this is just too big of a job to come back and have to redo something I don't like doing that on anything so, uh, another thing I like to do is put the right size socket here. Here's the old bearing in the wheel, in the old wheel. And what I do is I tap them through with another socket from the other side. It's about a half inch socket. Um, you want to make sure that you're not. You're not hitting on the inner portion of the bearing. You get as far out as you can. I usually just am able to tap these through into my hand. And it'll pop out. It is worth the effort to save one of these bearings. I think these are like $6 each. And again, I think we, I think we counted there's 12. You know, this thing with a little bit of, you know, it's spinning easily and smoothly um again there's no excess free play or anything like that but i think with a little bit of silicone spray it'll loosen up again going to clean off the, the corrosion here on this surface where it will need to seat into the new wheel. Okay, it's all cleaned up and smooth. Definitely should help seat into the new wheel. And uh, to tap these in, you'll be using a 5 8 inch socket. And you definitely want to make sure the outer bearing goes on the side with the screw hole. It's an important detail. You always want to make sure that they're nice and even and it's not crooked. And a lot of times you can get a good start on it with just your fingers if you've got it nice and clean. Usually get a good block of wood. Set the wheel down on it. Alright, I usually take a block of wood. Again, got the bearing already started in there. I usually take the flat side. 
so that it's only making contact with the bearing on the outer ring there. And get it nice and seated in there. Always worked well, never had a problem. So that's how you get new bearing seated in. Back up top, we got the inner and outer bearing. This bearing's uh, already seated in the wheel. This one's all cleaned up. I usually put one more shot of silicone spray on everything for whatever bit it will help. This guy's gonna need uh, tapped on and I usually flip the socket around the same 5 8 and I'm able to tap onto the bearing not the wheel I'm going to tap the bearing push on the bearing it will push the wheel um, to seat on this inside a little close up of where we are right here so we're going to get, gonna get that one seated now and I find um, that there are times where I like to use the extension again to help to help get the hammer uh, away from the trolley, particularly on this guy. I'm able to work on him without removing any of this and it would help that extension as well. But uh, in any case, I'm gonna do the seating of this one off camera. <laughs> so the camera's not jumping around, be right back. All right, that one's all seated. Took about three taps. And when these old bearings especially are nice and clean, uh, they cooperate quite a bit better. So really at this point, we just need to reinstall our screw. We don't want to forget that. I think it's a lot easier to go ahead and put it on the, back on the wrench. And it has a little bit of the blue thread locker on there. Obviously if you feel like you want to put another dab on there by all means i have never done it one time and never had a problem um torque spec on this i have no idea if you're doing that you're probably not working on a wet saw but if i had to guess maybe 10 pounds maybe 10 pounds is all i'm putting on that little screw um, I don't know, this guy, we might put a little bit of lubricant on him. I think he's going to be all right. I can, I can grab that middle. Yeah. Sometimes after sitting a while, and this one has been, we have an extra one of these so that when, uh, we have one of the saws down and trolley needs some work, we just put another trolley on it. But, uh, this is the extra right now. It had been sitting a little bit waiting, um, so some, sometimes they get sticky. I think a little bit of lubricant on this one will be good to go. Spacer. Lock nut. Uh, I don't need to kill this thing either, but I usually put about 10 pounds, 10 pounds on it. It's a lock nut, but uh, in any case, this thing won't, you know, spin wildly out of control, but it moves easy. Uh, and there it is. Get all three done and she'll be cutting like brand new. Nice and straight, nice and tight, not moving around. So uh, anyhow, if you're having problems with your trolley, you need some wheels, definitely order yourself some bearings. Uh, I think it's worth having several on hand. I find that usually on a rebuild, I need to replace one to two. Uh, you by no means need 
all 12. Um, but I definitely have one of the, the outer cup as well because you will find this, this one. I, I know I'm replacing him. He's just too worn. So he's going to get replaced. He's got a groove worn in him. And maybe this one too. But uh, after this, usually, yeah, cutting, cutting really good. And it could be easily a year or two in use uh, just depending on which saw ends up at what project and how much it's getting used there so uh anyhow yeah hey four boys garage here we're out remember to like and subscribe